Hey guys, Mr. Kohler here. I want to send you guys a little bit of a video about AP chemistry, especially the summer work. So this is some stuff about what your responsibilities are and just to make sure that you're getting going on this. If you haven't started on this, it's not time to panic yet. Uh, if you don't start soon, we're going to run into some trouble because I'll be seeing you guys in, let's see, about two weeks. At least that's the hope. Um, first off, AP Chemistry is a college course. All your AP courses are audited college courses, and if you score high enough, you can get college credit, or at the very least, it'll make the stuff you're doing in college review. All right, so being a college course, you have to have a college textbook. All right, this is the one that we're using. It's Zumdahl, seventh edition. Uh, we're able to get away with the seventh edition because they're revamping the curriculum. Uh, any time we're going to have to go to a newer edition of this uh, which would be ninth or tenth edition and those things are a lot more expensive but this Zumdahl is uh, used by more AP chemistry instructors than any other college textbook in the country so it works pretty well in addition to this you can get a paperback student solutions manual that I highly recommend you can find those online check on eBay and stuff uh, it's really worth the money. Probably the best purchase you could get other than the textbook. I am not going to require it, but we can't go through the answers to all the questions in here. And this will only give you just the answer, not how you solve for it um, in the back of the textbook. So the students who've gotten the Student Solutions Manual have not regretted it. Uh, I have a lot of students are scrambling to buy one of those about a month into the class as the things get more difficult so really go on eBay wherever you need to Amazon I don't care try to see if you can get the student solutions manual it'll really help you out okay so now what's the stuff that you need to be working on well I sent to you for the each chapter here's the learning objectives the learning objectives are the things that you need to know you don't have to answer the question so when I say hey, you need to be able to differentiate a theory from a hypothesis from a law. That doesn't mean you that you have to do that on paper and turn that into me. That's one of the things that you need to be able to do on the test. The homework are the questions that are in parentheses. Those are at the end of each chapter. Those are the things that you have to give me the answers for. You have to show me your work and give me the answer so I can properly assess it. And please put the number with the question. I literally will have students sometimes that write all over the page, don't number anything, and then I just can't grade it and I've got to hand it back to you, which makes both of us very sad. So, you know, number the thing. You don't have to write out the question, but show me your, how you solve for it and give me the answer, okay? You can't just write down the answers because then I don't know if you solved it or if you just copied it on. I also can't assess what you're doing wrong. Okay, so up here on our new fancy piece of technology, so this is called a smart board, I've brought up a copy of, here's the chapter one learning objectives. So let me give you an example of how this will work. Section 1.1 is the first section of chapter one in your book. And it's called an overview of chemistry. Then it says you just have to read this section. So you got to read this section. That's what you're responsible for. And then be prepared to discuss how does a Christian approach science and what is the church's position on the big ideas of science. This is not going to be on one of your tests. It's uh, really nice for us. In chemistry, there's just really no conflict with any Catholic teachings whatsoever in chemistry. Uh, there's been a lot of famous scientists in chemistry um, who work at Catholic universities. Uh, there's been some uh, pretty famous priests who worked on the Big Bang Theory. So uh, that's just not going to be any kind of an issue for us a little bit. But we'll talk about that a little bit when I get to see you, hopefully, uh, in person. Uh, number, or section 1.2, the scientific method. Um, you know, basically it's humility before the facts. Uh, the one thing that bugs me a little bit is you'll see like in the media in particular misuse the term hypothesis theory and law. Uh, they mean a little bit different things and a lot of times people say, well, that's just somebody's theory. In science, if something's a theory, that means you have pretty good evidence to support it. What they should be saying, well, that's just their hypothesis. That means you don't really have evidence 
to support that yet. Um, but this is where you'll start seeing the homework. So you'll see parentheses and there's questions. Oops. I bumped it there and then you'll see that the keyboard comes up on this. So questions 9, 10, 17, 18. Those are questions you find at the end of the chapter. That's the homework. Now you can type out your answers if you want to. Um, that's not actually bad practice because if we have to take the test online again this year, um, some students did that and there's ways you can do that even with the math and it can work out pretty well. There's a problem though. Some of the questions are going to involve you having to sketch things. Okay, that's become a bigger and bigger thing in AP Chemistry and in Physics over the last few years. If you're sketching stuff, you can't really do that on a computer very easily. So my suggestion would be is do it on paper, or you could type out your answers, do the sketches on paper, and then you can take a snapshot of that stuff to send to me. So that's stuff to get you started a little bit, so hopefully that helps out. Um, I'll be giving you a few tutorials on this stuff right in here. This is really just going to be mostly working with numbers. Okay, we have to be on the same page on how we report numbers, you know, what kind of things we measure, how to convert that stuff. It's all review from freshman physical science and probably any chemistry class you had before. So hopefully that sets you straight on what you need to do. So remember, you're doing the parentheses questions at the back of the book, that's the thing that I need to see from you. And so make sure that you do that in something that I, you can turn into me or take a picture of to, you know, forward to me. So hope you guys are having a good summer, what's left of it here, and uh, I'll see you soon. Email me if you have any questions. Thanks.